Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Singapore. After some pre-announcements of it leaked over the weekend, we have now all the details about a new attack against WPA2 that goes by crack or the key reinstallation attack. One problem we always run into with wireless networks is that they don't really work all that way. So many wireless protocols do take into account that wireless data is being lost and corrupted pretty much all the time. So resends or having the same data being sent over and over again is very typical for wireless networks. And this particular feature is here used against WPA2. Just to take the most important part ahead, uh, this particular vulnerability, while serious, doesn't really kill or invalidate WPA2. It is luckily patchable and patchable in a backward compatible manner. So if you are patching your client, if you're patching your access point, they can still communicate with unpatched systems. The problem really comes down to that uh, during the initial handshake, when a station connects to an access point, you do have a handshake where uh, these keys are being negotiated. The critical part here is the third part of the handshake where the access point does transmit the group temporal key to the station. Now, a typically that also then resets a nuns and a sequence number that's being used to then modify that group temporal key from packet to packet. This particular part of the handshake, well, it can be resent. And again, that's kind of normal in wireless networks that yes, I'm acknowledging that I received the key, but now I'm getting the same key again, which just means that probably my acknowledgement got lost. So uh, that new key will override the old key that I just received. The biggest problem here is Linux and Android. Linux and Android, and actually in following the specification very closely here, they're actually deleting the key after it is being received. So when the key is being resent, it can be overwritten with an all zero key. But not just Linux, pretty much all platforms are vulnerable in some way. This is not just limited to WPA2 that uses a pre-shared key or a passphrase. Also enterprise deployments are vulnerable. Luckily, there are patches appearing from various vendors. Just as I started the podcast, I took a look and Cisco released patches. I've seen patches from Ubiquiti. There were patches released for Linux, not 100% sure yet how much they went into distributions already, but definitely Try and update your systems today. Try again at the weekend and see if uh, any more patches are coming out. Most importantly, patch your clients. And that, of course, can be tricky, in particular uh, if you have devices, uh, Wi-Fi cameras and such, for which it may be difficult to find a patch. Aside from patching, there isn't really much you can do. All configurations are vulnerable. It doesn't matter how strong your passphrase is. Actually, that's sort of one of the good parts, if there is a good part, about this vulnerability, that your passphrase does not leak. That's part of the design of WPA2, the passphrase or the shared key that's really derived from it is never transmitted across the air. So it is not affected by this particular vulnerability. Also, this vulnerability does not allow the attacker to decrypt recorded traffic. The attacker has to have a position close to the network in order to inject traffic into the network in order to decrypt the traffic. Depending on the exact configuration of the network, it may be possible to also inject traffic. Uh, but the main risk here is that an attacker is able to inject these additional handshake uh, packets. And with that, the attacker is able to decrypt your WPA to transmitted traffic. So as additional things that you can do, well, uh, use TLS, uh, use uh, VPNs, 
probably a good idea anyway over wireless networks. Wireless networks fundamentally are never as secure as wired networks. Just because you have much less control over the medium than you have in a wired network and you always have to deal with quite bad transmission characteristics, which means lots of dropped and corrupted packets. As part of the show notes, I'll link to the original website for this, but I'll also link to a quick blog post from Lance Spitzner at Securing the Human, which really quite nicely summarizes sort of what you should probably tell your non-technical friends about this vulnerability, given all the hype being currently broadcast in the media. It's probably good to sort of just uh, narrow it down to what they need to do and how it affects them. And if you were celebrating last week that Adobe had not released an update for Flash Player and you considered Flash Player safe now, well, you celebrated too early. It turns out that there isn't a security update for Adobe Flash Player and it does actually address a currently exploited vulnerability. Uh, this particular vulnerability was exploited by some APT groups, so it has been used in targeted attacks. Definitely patch Adobe Flash Player. The patch was released earlier today. And then we do actually have a quite interesting diary also by Didi that I hope it doesn't get lost in all of the talk about the crack attack. And this was about two copies of MicroTorrent that were submitted by a reader. The problem here was that both executables were supposed to be identical. They both carried valid signatures by but the hashes of the files were different. So uh, Didier took a closer look at this and essentially what happened was that when you're signing a executable like this, well, you're taking the executable, you're calculating a hash, you're creating the signature and you're adding the signature to the executable. The problem here, of course, is that the signature itself is not included and there is an option to add additional data to the signature. Now, this, of course, can be used to hide data. In this particular case, what happened apparently was that the additional data that was included here was more campaign data in order to track where you download the particular binary from. By doing so, download sites or sites that distribute this binary can sort of add their own and additional tags to the binary outside of the signed data. So the digital signature does not get invalidated by adding this data. This is a feature, as Didier points out, that has been present in authentic code for quite a while. I think he says 10 years. Microsoft has addressed this somewhat in a patch a while ago, but doesn't necessarily enforce it. So yes, it's still possible to add additional data to a signed binary after the binary was signed. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.